talking about management today. I am Kaushik Kumar. I lead uh, product strategy for fasting and financial orchestration. Uh, my friend and colleague here, Krishna Gandhishala, he's going to be uh, presenting for most part. And what we're going to be talking today is uh, the thing which a lot of folks uh, get confused about. In fact, personally, when I somebody wakes me up to sleep, I have to think twice before actually answering such questions on trade accounting. So the objective for today was to demystify it. Right? We wanted to give you guys a sense of um, why we do what we do from a trade accounting perspective. We're going to take some process flows and talk through what accounting events happen in trade accounting. And hopefully that will give you a better sense of uh, how it's architected and uh, also many feedback as we go through that. Right? Uh, so welcome again. Um, it's a pretty healthy audience we see out here, so let's just the agenda. Like I said, we're going to give you an overview of trade accounting. Um, with examples of trade costing and business flows, we're going to take examples of uh, in a company procurement. We also call it global procurement. Um, there's a legacy name which people speak and like. Um, we're going to talk about internal transfers or uh, internal steel transfers as we call them here in the uh, We will talk about uh, internal dropshipping, which is also called the internal and we call it the company dropshipping. So we'll give you those examples and see how these events uh, you know, happen in those scenarios. And then look at the accounting as it goes. But it's a pretty hardcore accounting uh, session, so for those who are interested in accounting, this is actually going to be a, a good brain teaser. Right? Here's the next slide. Okay, uh, this will be the last slide I'm talking on, and I'll pass it on to Krishna. So, what is a trade event, right? So, if you think about any business flow, uh, you have a combination of physical flow, like a, like a sales order shipment. But then, a sales order shipment is not, need not necessarily get made a financial event these days, right? So, which is where kind of trade events fit, fit these by, and in a way, your business flow is incomplete without trade events, right? So, if you therefore think about it, a business flow requires both a physical event as well as a trade event, right? So, a trade event, therefore, is used to depict the financial flow. An example of that would be if you think about purchasing uh, material and receiving it into your warehouse, but it's being paid for by another company, right, or another legal context, maybe in, in theory you call it another profit center. That transaction, which is a buy sell relationship that happens between the profit center that's actually receiving the item and the profit center that's actually paying the invoice, needs to be different than producing trade events. Okay, so that's an example. This is what the next bullet point talks about, essentially your buy-sell relationship. And then you also, like I said, it's not supplementing your physical events because your business flows in complete without regarding all aspects of the transaction. So you have to have a physical event, which is the case of you know, a pure receipt, but the physical receipt is not sufficient. You also have to complement that or supplement it with additional transactions which we end up needing using you know, financial orchestration and cost. That's briefly why we have trade events. I'm sure it's sort of been used to the world, if you guys have more examples, you already know this. Um, let's move on to the next slide, and I will hand it over to Krishna to actually walk you through what is the trade event architecture, why we do what we do, and kind of understand this from each business flow and so forth. Okay, Krishna, over to you. Yep, thanks. Um, thank you, Kaushik, uh, for setting up the context. And just to add to what Kaushik said, uh, many times, trade events comes across as complex uh, to understand, but uh, it's actually very simple. It's enough simple if you could uh, relate or understand the underlying concept. So I think that is what I would be covering in the following slide. So we trace uh, costing uh, business flows. So this slide, you see, uh, there are uh, three business flows, and trade costing is just that. Or for the complex business scenario, uh, and uh, in case of purchasing flow, we have something like, like uh, global procurement, a dropship scenario, and combined. Especially for transfers, all the inter organization transfer flows, uh, where uh, there's a concept of in transit, so you may want to book, or you want to track your uh, inventory in transit in financial numbers. So even though there's a shipment and proceed, uh, you would still have the trade event coming in to help you try or uh, track the inventory value in transit. And then in case of shipment, uh, we would cover all the scenarios, the drop ships, where in the 
fiscal flow and the financial flow uh, could be different. So, summarize uh, these three events are actually present in all the scenarios. Wherever there is a need for uh, us to have a serious financial flow, which needs to be supplement the fiscal event. So, this slide uh, I would uh, talk about all the logical events uh, that actually supplement your physical transaction event. So if you see, uh, broadly we have two type of events. Uh, one we can call it as a receipt when we are getting something, and the other is the shipment where we actually move the uh, issue or uh, sell something. So this is true for inventory transfer flow too, because you would have a sh uh, shipment or issue from one off, and then there is a receipt or the issue from one issue into the uh, other round. So for a moment, if you can picture this, uh, and uh, we can actually review this, uh, one of the cheat sheets, uh, I could say, is, uh, to help us understand what are the trade events would actually be uh, when we see them in context of the different business scenarios. So like in this case, uh, if you see, uh, there's a fiscal receipt. So this fiscal receipt, uh, whenever there's a fiscal receipt event, so this event would be supplemented by your PRE or uh, this is the uh, acronym we will be hearing uh, further in the uh, discussion, by which I would be that is a trade receipt code, followed by uh, trade in transit receipt. So this is uh, the uh, sort of a logical receipt and logical uh, delivery, delivery event. And similarly, when you see a physical shipment event, uh, you would uh, see it getting supplemented by a trade in transit issue, which is your logical uh, issue, or a trade sale issue, which is a, or a logical shipment. So that is the reason we are calling these events, whatever the trade events as logical events. Now, similarly, on these return scenario, you would exactly see the reversal of the uh, power trade events. So in case of like in this case, when you were doing a physical return, so the trade event that can be get or uh, supplement the shipment gets reversed, and we call them as the trade in transit return and trade return accrual. This is your receipt and uh, return. And whenever there is a return receipt, again, trade in transit issue, we would uh, see even call it trade in transit return. Uh, this again a sort of core accounting, but still it is very useful for us to understand uh, because it summarizes the different events uh, which we got introduced to in our previous slide and what would be the accounting each of that event would carry. So, if you see this event, right, the trade receipt accrual, uh, which I said that it would supplement our buy side of the event uh, whenever there is a receipt. So, it has basically a uh, two legs. The debit and credit leg, and the debit leg would be trade clearing account, uh, like our wash account, uh, that would be reversed when you do a logical uh, delivery uh, in the company. And on the credit side, uh, you would be seeing either an intercompany accrual or a withdrawal payable and supplier accrual. So these are accrual events uh, which get uh, created as the liability side of your balance sheet. And these events that you see, uh, like supplier accrual, you will see this event only when you have a global focus and purchasing group. And when there are intercompany transactions, uh, you would see the intercompany accrual or intra payable, depending upon whether the transaction is with intercompany invoicing or not. So, broadly, whenever you see the DRA, uh, it would have the two legs, the clearing account. Uh, so, if you want to picture this with uh, the physical receipt, uh, a trade clearing is like a receipt inspection. And a supplier accrual is your supplier accrual that you see on the receipt. And a trade in transit receipt is what you would see on a pure delivery. So the trade clearing is the reversal of trade clearing on the uh, uh, DRA, which is the uh, receipt inspection. And the trade in transit, since this is a logical flow, is like a, a logical delivery leg, which is a logical inventory for your uh, physical inventory when you sort of uh, compare this with your purchasing flow. Similarly, on the sell side, here yeah, uh, we are seeing two events, which is what we got introduced in the previous slide, which is your trading transit issue and a trade sale issue. So, 
the material plant in issue when you do a transfer or an issue from one off to the another off. So it is an intercompany thing. So this is the intercompany off for a global again based upon what is your uh, invoicing option on the uh, low for the flow. And the other side is the trade in transfer. And the trade sale issue is what you see uh, when you see the cost when getting recorded followed by a trade in transit or dropship delay. So the trade in transit is when you do a intercompany or internal dropship and flow. And a dropship delivery is this bad when the business flow is given by the uh, customer dropship delivery. Now let us get into the uh, business flow. We'll be trying to see what are the trade events that we got introduced to, what are the different accounting that is carry, and how those events get used in different business flows uh, that calls you that talk about and the overview. So we'll start with the procurement so far. So in this example, we see uh, there's a supplier factory somewhere in India, and then there is a warehouse somewhere again in the Europe, and there's a PO uh, in the uh, in Singapore, which is actually procuring the material from India to be shipped to the, uh, to the uh, warehouse in Europe. And uh, this is the view which is uh, negotiating or interacting with the supplier. So, finance, so physical flow is where the supplier is sending the goods to the warehouse in Europe. Based upon orders from uh, the purchase uh, order from the uh, Singapore. So, in this this physical flow. Now, this physical flow is a supplementary financial flow because here there are two flows, flavors of it. One, a buy side, where the supplier taking view is procuring the item from the supplier. So, it is liable to pay uh, the amount to the supplier for the goods they are shipped. And similarly, you see, uh, on the other side, you see a um, sell flow uh, because uh, the supplier taking actually doing an intercompany company uh, to Europe. So Europe is not directly interacting with the supplier. So there's a sell side of it here on the uh, on Singapore view. And then there's a buy side to be made out in the Europe. So now, with this, in this picture, so we we'll see the event that we start seeing is we'll see three events in the uh, Singapore. So again, you know, if you could recollect the picture, and the thing that I asked you that picture is where we said that, that there are TRA, GIR, and uh, GII, the trade receipt accrual, the trade in transit receipt, and the trade in transit issue. So the first two events are your receipt events, buy side events. And the, and the last one is your sales side event. So we would a TRA event. So what we do on TRA is uh, we, would, uh, we would create a supplier accrual. This accrual gets recorded based upon your ownership change in the financial orchestration. So it could be whether when the receipt is actually got created in Europe or an invoice is sent to the uh, Singapore PU. So it would create a trade clearing account, uh, on the debit side and a supplier accrual. And when mm, the logical uh, delivery is recorded, uh, you would knock out the trade clearing and then move the value to your balance sheet on the trading transit. And once the goods have been actually been Received. So till this time, it means that uh, the ownership has been passed on from the supplier to the PU. So the items are uh, the financial value of the shipment is still in transit. And it is still in transit depending again based upon the agreement, uh, whether it is a receipt or a shipment, uh, according to your PU, it will be given coming from uh, SFO. So once the ownership has been transferred uh, from the single Singapore PU, the Europe view, uh, we will give up the uh, event in the trading transit issue and we will the accounting which would be charging your intercompany cost and then clearing out your transit in the books of Singapore. Now, on the warehouse on the uh, Europe side, so Europe will also have these two events uh, because it, these two events will, are the buy side of the event where uh, there would be a TRA event to basically book the intercompany take care of the intercompany accrual and the trade in transit this is again a logical transit financial value of the items but still the goods so financially the goods have not been uh, in Europe so the ownership change is not yet complete so 
the value of the item is still in transit and now the and transit is in the books of Europe. So you would see a trade clearing and intercompany approval followed by you a trade in transit and trade clearing. So which means the value of the in transit has now been shifted from Singapore to Europe. And once the receipt is actually getting recorded in the uh, Europe, so you will see a receipt with the receipt event uh, which gets triggered uh, by receiving and sent to costing. And this would take a remove the uh, value from the transit and move to a new section account and finally it gets on your at the side on your balance sheet and then you can it. This sort of completes the uh, flow on the global purchase and uh, we are going to see the event. So what is the even though you see the multiple trade events, but there are only these two set of trade events, a CRA event, a receipt event, the trade receipt accrual and trading transit and a trading transit issue event. So so this slide is what I just explained. Uh, we are seeing how to logically keep for these trade events. So just taking that example uh, for the for the area PRA event or the trade receipt accrual event is what I was just just seen with the logical receipt that gets booked in the supply as it's in the book and for the supply accrual and supply taking no receipt is in the put in our case. And the log trade in transit is nothing but your logical delivery uh, that is getting recorded. And the trading transit is the logical issue out of uh, uh, from the uh, logical delivery or the logical inventory of the trading transit. Then so on the receiving side, uh, you know, note, which is the Europe in our case, so you see a trade receipt accrual, which is to book the intercompany accrual because there's a financial transaction between uh, Singapore note, like in this case, like you see a financial transaction between Singapore and Europe. So you have CRA to take care of that intercompany accrual. Trading transit because all books are not in own, so it is in the um, book as in transit, the financial value of the goods in transit. And once the goods have been actually recorded, because the receipt is complete, uh, in the physical receipt and physical delivery, you move the value from your transit to the actual receipt. The other flavor uh, that we are talking about is the uh, drop shipment flow. This is the customer drop shipment flow. This customer drop shipment flow is like uh, you have a customer somewhere in India, and then there's also a factory. Uh, in India, and there's a business unit. This business unit is uh, the customer asks something to be sold, like uh, from this business unit. So it would rather manufacturing sales, it would actually ask the uh, supplier factory to directly ship the goods to the customer. So there's a physical shipment again from the uh, supplier to the customer, and there's a logical event between the supplier and the uh, business unit, and the buy side event and the sell side event from the business unit to the So the events that we see is uh, we see a dropship receipt, dropship delivery, and a trade sale issue. So this dropship receipt uh, is like your physical receipt. So like picture this as in you know, a simple scale, which means that the item is directly being sold by business unit to the customer. So you would uh, do a sales order issue, which is nothing but dictating your inventory and then moving the goods, uh, uh, shipping the goods to customer. So you would have a sales order issue event alone. But prior to that, there would be a receipt due to your inventory. There could be a pure receipt, there could be a business receipt, or there could be a work order completion receipt. So there's an inventory that is existing, and that inventory is getting shipped out and the sales order issue. So in this case, then there's no inventory in your book, but there's a shipment happening from the supplier to your customer. So you would create uh, these events, the dropship receipt and dropship delivery, based upon the ASM getting recorded in this case. And since there's no physical shipment from the business unit, more of a logical shipment, we would use this trade sale issue. So again, the receipt event and the delivery event, this was your supply accrual, and then your uh, logical inventory. And the trade sale issue is to take out from your uh, dropship inventory and move the value to the business account. We have seen the customer drop shipment flow. So this is uh, the internal drop shipment flow. So by internal, uh, or uh, what I call uh, internal is the intercompany drop shipment. So this is the factory is owned by uh, uh, the, uh, like a PNG entity is owned by us, and the PNG is 
was also the same. So you, rather than asking the supplier who is outside of your business, shipping the goods to customer, I have a factory uh, where we try to get manufactured, but this is not directly dealing with my customer. So there's a new selling machine which is dealing with the customer. So the customer would bring the orders to the selling machine, and the selling machine would in turn ask the uh, factory uh, to ship the goods directly to the customer. So you will have a fun uh, physical shipment so, because the factory is actually doing the shipment to the customer. But internally, uh, there is a sell and a buy uh, event because the factory is internally financially it is selling the goods to the selling machine. So the customer is not going to pay me uh, the factory. It's the selling view which, which is going to pay me. So there's a sell side of the trade event here. And then the buy side of trade event on the uh, selling view because it is actually getting the goods into the, like logically it is getting the goods and then it is sending to the customer. So there's a sell event here, trade event, buy trade event here, and then there's a, again a sell trade event between. So in the factory, you will see a sales order issue because you see the physical inventory that is being moved out, so you have a sales order issue. But still, the item still in transit, it is not, the ownership chain is not complete. So you will see a sales order issue where I am taking the uh, value of inventory and then moving to trade in transit. So when the ownership is complete, where the ownership has shifted from factory to the selling view, so I would take out from the in transit and I would book on my side the inter company cost. Now the sales flow for the factory is complete. Now you have a buy flow to be for the selling view. So the selling view will have a trade receipt road, which is because you have to you are buying it from the factory. So there's an intercompany uh, accrual that gets recorded for your transaction, followed by a transit receipt because now you now the value of the item is owned by selling view. It's still not delivered to your customer. So it is in the trade in transit receipt. They are saying that the value of the items which are in transit is now owned by the CPU. And once the sale is fulfilled to the customer, you will see a trade sale issue where I am taking out the uh, value from in transit and booking the cost of goods sold, the different cost of goods sold, which gets moved on to cost and the RTR revenue recognition is complete. So, this is an extension to the uh, uh, customer dropshipping flow. Again, if you see the, uh, if you're trying to can correlate uh, the uh, way the trade event getting used. So we talked about trade event being buy and sell, and then we are saying that the trade event will supplement our uh, shipment and uh, repeat. So whenever there is a shipment, we have seen trade in transit issue getting used, and whenever there is a uh, shipment, the trade sale issue getting used towards the customer option. And similarly, whenever there is a financial buy event, uh, a trade receipt accrual and a trade in transit. So, since this is a financial supply, so broadly we just have these three events a PR event, trade in transit receipt, and trade in transit issue. And depending upon the financial buy or sell, these events get created and recounted. Now we are getting to this uh, another flow, which is the internal physical transit flow. As I said, uh, in the of the year flow, um, call where we went through the trade transaction event. Uh, the transfers is also similar to a sale or a buy because of the there's a shipment happening from one factory, one certificate, and getting recorded in So it's not an external sale uh, or external purchase, it is an internal sale and internal procurement. So when the goods have been moved uh, from factory one to factory zero, there's a physical shipment getting recorded. But still, there is an interest in the items are in the <coughs> from factory one factory to another factory. So, there is a financial need to track the value of the inventory in from the financial point of view. So, whenever there is a shipment uh, or a transfer, so you would create an interest organization shipment. Um, so, which means that you are taking out of the inventory from the or and you are going to the trade in transit. And depending upon whether it is a global shipment of a global state, the other set of events get come to get triggered. So when you have a trade in transit issue, so which means that uh, the ownership chain has been complete. So the in transit in the books of factory is uh, is, uh, is transferred to in transit as in transit to the zero book. So you take 
thought mail transit and then you would book mail to company call. On the warehouse side, again, you have these uh, two sets of events. I will So, as I said, whenever there's a receipt, you could accompany by a CRM here. Yeah. Then there's a physical receipt here in the warehouse. So, you would get these get supplemented by your uh, trade event of CRM, where I'm where the company was getting recorded. And then the income uh, transit by you would get created because the goods have not had come, but just now. There are these financial only black of the item which are in transit. And once the fiscal receipt is complete, uh, the value gets moved from the transit to a receipt section and finally it gets into the book. And you can show your uh, books of your house as your uh, inventory on, on your balance sheet side. So, again, in IMG, even though it is an internal flow, so wherever there is a need, where you want to represent the financial flow, which you need to be supplemented by the physical flow, you know, we are using this on the trade in income system. Okay. So this is one of the uh, groups that we have already seen the preset right? So if you could uh, recollect, we have seen uh, uh, the purchasing, transfers, and the uh, shipment. So these are three broad brackets where the we have said that the trade events would come in play and they would be used. So we have already seen the purchasing side of it. Uh, we have seen the transfers, we have seen the shipments. With the purchasing side, we also have another flavor which is the consigned flow. So consigned flow, also we have a trade event and uh, we'll go through this, uh, which tells you why uh, it comes trade events are needed for consigned. Because consigned is typically where goods are sent from the supplier to the to the warehouse or the uh, requisition or the requisition of the goods. So if it is not consigned, uh, the receipt and the delivery, so the receipt would itself, so there is no need to have a financial representation separately to the fiscal representation because once the goods are been sold, uh, the ownership has changed and uh, the warehouse is the goods is only it. But in case of consigned, the goods are not actually owned by the warehouse, the goods are sent by supplier. And the goods are still, though goods are at the uh, warehouse, financially they are still owned by the supplier. So, what we do here is when the goods have been um, shipped from supplier and we see it in the warehouse, we would see two events which is called a consigned PO receipt and a consigned PO delivery. So, which is similar to the regular PO receipt and PO delivery. So, since the goods are not owned and financially, warehouse is not still responsible for this. We would create a combined accrual uh, when on the receipt, and this gets a uh, combined clearing is knocked off, and we would record something on the combined receipt. So far, we don't have trade events. This again is physical receipt and a uh, physical event from the inventory for which we do the account. Now, once the warehouse goods are in warehouse, uh, eventually they may be consumed, and on consumption, the warehouse guy would inform the supplier saying that the goods are being owned by. Means that now the ownership of the goods have been transferred financially from the supplier to the warehouse. So the supplier is now looking for his payment for the goods that he has actually shipped and recorded financially as a payment by the supplier and a purchase by the warehouse. So on the consumption, inventory would create two sets of events. One is called a transfer, transfer to own the issue. And there is another event supplement that transfer to own receipt. So, if on the transfer to own issue, uh, what we do is uh, take out the combined inventory because the item is no more combined inventory and it has moved to actual inventory. So, we take out the combined inventory and then similarly, since now the combined has been recorded, there is no combined accrual. So, this would supplement your uh, event in the inventory. So there's a receipt event, there's a delivery event, and there's an issue. Now, since the receipt fiscal event is already complete, now we need to represent the fiscal event in financial form. Because now, after the consumption date is recorded, you have the supplier for whom the invoice would be created, you would need to create the invoice, and in the warehouse, uh, you need to pay the supplier and also need to take care of the inventory accounting and the accrual accounting. So to supplement that, we have these three events. So this is 
this we will call it trade as a tech one trade in transit and finally we'll say as sort of own the ticket so as i've been telling uh, so far trade ticket approval event is an event uh, that would supplement our buy side of the flow so since the ownership change is complete now we need to record a car approval so the trade receipt approval event is the one which gets to which records the supplier approval now once you have a supplier approval you would also need a logical uh, a receipt and a logical delivery the reason is in, in trial so we would we have something called a trade in transit so here it does not really mean that uh, goods are actually in transit because the goods are already with you so it does that financially you are moving the goods value from the combined book to the actual book so once you have a supplier approval that is recorded means the liability got established now you need to also establish your asset type so we want to create these two supplement events a trade in transit and a transfer to own the ticket so to basically take out the uh, uh, combined value from the combined books to the actual book so we create this distributory event which was uh, again this is a momentary event it is not something that uh, like there's a time gap so the minute there's a consumption uh, you would see these two events getting created uh, parallelly so this is again something uh, just to facilitate the financial accounting so you create this event trading process and uh, it gets followed by one trans uh, transfer to own receipt which is again an interest event to record the actual inventory in this book so the great accounting architecture um uh, that was like got introduced uh, in the uh, fusion system would actually supplement all this uh, flow and uh, would also help you to uh, represent your financial flow which could be different to the actual inventory and so i think uh, yeah i think that uh, is what we have planned for this session uh, so i think we are almost all ended I guess you can look at the ETF and the cautious notions that they will want to add. I am Sudhir. I was actually answering the question, the question that I gave to Krishna. So the question is, for an internal transfer, why should there be a debit to enter the intro or maybe in any case, not be in transit? Or after that, maybe I am citing it, maybe even after it. Also answer this question about the IMP flow. If you have direct transfer between you know, the trade events get triggered, the answer is yes. Why don't we take both the questions? Uh, sure. I don't know what happened.
not clear about this question. Um, it's from Lulia. I'll try and read it again. At the top of the post, I an example of a needle in overhead of five slash F of as you need to purchase diet. We have got the example of the diet of the country. What was the accounting thing in the top of the post? That's your question. That's the answer. Uh, the last question was who will be sharing the presentation yet? The um, presentation as well as the, um, the recording will be available in 24 hours. I think that kind of covers all the questions we had uh, up until this point. Other questions, go. Okay, so Julia wanted me to repeat the answer. Uh, Julia, I hope I, I repeat the question first off. The question was about cost of food in the ID, and your question was about are we at the account end? The answer is no, we got 11 in the account. The 11 at which we need to be cost of the distribution is the cost of the So you do a cost of bonus and cost of So you can that that you do the cost of Okay, and one more question from uh Dr. What is trade with the two and three? So you want to talk? Do you want to cover this? Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. So it, okay, so trade with the tech two was uh is an event uh, that supplements to a listening event and it is used to food. You are supplier equal or a company equal. So when you have physical receipt uh, event like a physical purchase or a store, so you have physical delivery. So the receipt event is where you would create an equal because the ownership financially has been moved from the uh, supplier to you, and uh, the business is now need to pay the supplier for the item that he actually delivered. So the TRA event is actually is used to represent that, and depending upon the business flow, uh, you would have the debit and credit. The trade clearing is uh, the debit side of the event, and the credit side would be a supplier call or intercompany call. So that event is used to uh, represent a buy flow, pay uh, for the business is expected to pay something to the item that has been received or logically received. Right. Think of it as the uh, not a direct parallel. But think of it as the an event that is booking your approval, whether it's in the company role or the plan, as the name goes. You may have to internalize this book. It's not. Uh, it's not. You know, on the face of it, doesn't sound intuitive, but once you look at it and internalize it, uh, you understand why the design is the way. And and let us know if you find anything that you feel. Uh, not required. We can definitely take the feedback and into it further. Okay, and one more question came up. We need to set up supply chain financial orchestration to receive the account to be shown to close. Is it cropping cross centers? Yes. Right. For all flows like this, even if not passing profit center like the global procurement or the shipment flows, right? Um, if the flow while not substation is needed by the bot, but could not work, like but it does not even allow you to create a uh, PO of type global system, just internal drop shipment or a customer drop shipment flow, uh, without a flow, it will not work. And if a transfer, uh, internal or intra transfer, what question is it right now? Only if you are a cross profit center be used, then you should need a SFL. Even if it's not this, then uh, uh, in that case, the constant will create those events and then the content. So, the accounting wise, they will not be uh, really different. The way trade events will be created. For uh, the receipt side, the TRA and TIR, the trade is take over and trade in transit will come for uh, the receipt and on the shipment or an issue, the trade in transit issue or a trade issue. Okay, so that covers all the
चेक Thank you very much. 